Hello fellow crafters and welcome back to Max DM Crafting. It's time guys to paint the cube. It's time to use all my arsenal for give to this beautiful piece a massive and majestic aspect. In this episode I'm gonna try some airbrush techniques thanks to Galeri. Galeri didn't sponsor the video but they were kind enough to send me a couple of airbrushes. I will try them on the field. Crack on! Ooh. Inside we have all the parts, beautiful, we will test it immediately on the castle, okay? Let's try it. So as you can see, I started to fill the spaces between the bricks with the grout. Actually, it's just plaster, water it down. And uh, this helps, helps a lot, because uh, in this way you can uh, actually simulate the real grout and also you give the piece uh, a real touch. In this way, you don't have uh, any more the sensation that is just uh, pieces of foam. Instead, you have a beautiful effect. It is very, very realistic. You see? It's 
not necessary to have uh, a heavy touch but just here and there see how beautiful it is now a lot of pieces all treated in the same way and uh, i know it seems a waste of time because it was already painted but with the first coat you finally realize where you need a better touch of everything so totally necessary before to paint also the inside of the castle i need to reinforce the base because uh, the, the weight of the castle is too much for uh, this uh, four millimeter thick uh, piece of mdf so i will put some reinforcement on the base and then we go for the final touches and the final paint process crack on okay so this is what i've done i placed some reinforcement on the back of the board and now should be strong enough Every single step, guys, requires patience and attention. I don't want to have uh, a piece that is just, you know, quite good. I want the perfect table piece. Now I will proceed to paint the single pieces. There are quite a lot. But in this way, I will uh, have the chance to take care of every single detail. In this moment, all the pieces are removable, but then when I will finish with the paint job, I can put some of them together. For the inside, I have some of these. These are uh, little torch. You can see them, I think, I hope. And uh, they are from uh, Green Stuff World. And I will paint them separately and then I will place them inside the dungeon, inside the castle. A lot of work must be done, but now from this point, from this moment, everything is just adding details. Now I can see the finish line and uh, yeah, it's very important not to rush because uh, I see the piece that is all, almost done and this is the way the better way to ruin everything if you are rushing, if you are not being patient and making stuff slowly and with care.
brushing or brushwork in diorama painting? For me, it's never just about speed. It's about the effect I want to achieve. In the world of epic Warhammer fantasy or more time dioramas, the right technique can bring terrains and miniatures to life in a way that's almost magical. I use an airbrush for broad, even surfaces, creating zenithal highlights or achieving smooth blends between different shades. On the other hand, the brush comes in for those intricate details, whether I'm dry brushing to make texture pop or using washes to add the age and character to surfaces. Now, if we only care about speed, the airbrush wins hands down, 10 to 1, but experience teaches us when to choose one tool over the other, balancing each to achieve the best possible outcome. The cost might be slightly higher overall, but since the airbrush covers more area with less paint, it's definitely a worthy investment. In the end, it's all about combining the strengths of each technique to create something truly unique. Let's start with one of the most eye-catching parts of this build the color shading. First, I began with layers of red acrylic paint, gradually building up from a deep base coat to brighter, more intense reds on the raised areas. This technique brings the structure's shape to life and adds a lot of depth to each tile and surface. You can see how those deeper layers give the building a solid, weathered feel, while the brighter reds create highlights on the higher surfaces. This step-by-step -step shading technique is simple but super effective if you want a strong, realistic look. Next, we move on to one of my favorite techniques, the black wash. I use a heavily diluted black paint to flow into the crevices, really accentuating the textures. But there's the trick. After applying the wash, I immediately use a paper towel to gently dab off the excess. This leaves the wash only in the deepest parts, making the pieces look aged and worn. The black wash brings out so much detail, it almost feels like magic. And best of all, it's easy to try on your own projects for an instant transformation. Moving on to the smaller details, I wanted to give the dormer window grates a weathered metallic look. So I went with the bronze paint carefully applying it to each grate. It's small touches like this that bring out the character in the piece and make it feel authentic.
finally, we run to the big iron gate. For this, I use a sponging technique with gunmetal paint. I dip the sponge, dab off the excess, and lightly press it against the surface. This method adds texture, making the gate look warm and aged, without needing intricate brushwork. As you can see, in this zone, I'm preparing a pond. I want to have some uh, transparent resin and prepare some uh, water effects to make this zone really interesting. From this crack in the wall, I'm planning to create a waterfall that is going down here in this pond. Wish me luck! There we have it, the keep fully painted and ready for the surround painting. If you're into model building and painting, I highly recommend giving these techniques a shot. They're straightforward but give you incredible results. Okay guys, this is it for today, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. This channel survives because you are supporting me and my work. Please don't forget to subscribe on Patreon. Patreon is the best way to allow this channel to go on and do better and better. For you, if you subscribe on Patreon, a lot of extra content, you can download a lot of stuff and you will have early access to all my videos, guys. Till next time. Happy crafting!